Hello, people of God. How are you, precious standers? It is Lakidra. I am so excited again about coming on here, sharing another powerful word from the Lord that I know will bless each and every one of you, people of God. I want us to go a little bit further concerning Sarah's life, how God blessed her. There are some powerful character traits and some powerful things that the Lord want us to take a look at in his word that I know will change your life, people of God. And so thank all of you all for joining me. My first timers as well, God bless you. We welcome you. Thank you all so much for your support, people of God, your prayers, your wonderful comments, your uplifting words. They are so encouraging to me and all that you do in the work of God. The Lord is going to bless you. The Lord is going to take you higher and higher, take you into that promised land. Hallelujah. Do great and mighty things for you. There are so much. There are so much coming your way, people of God. Those of you that have been standing for the promises of God and the salvation of your loved ones. You that have been laying your lives down, not loving your life unto the death. You, people of God, that are seeking God and have been interceding on your spouse's behalf, your loved one's behalf. Get ready for what's coming your way. This is what pleases the Lord especially when our motives are right when our heart is one with him when we are concerned about those things that concerns him when we are willing to put god first and seek his righteousness seek and do what's right seek to do what's right all things will be added unto us hallelujah so i want i want to take us further people of god in the things of the Lord that's going to really bless us. I want us to look again deeply and closely into Sarah's life. Sarah's life was compared to Christ. And I want us to look at that. And that is what God is saying about all of us. You know, Sarah became the mother of many nations, meaning the mother of all God's people the mother of all those that will live righteous not the children of eve we are called to be and not the children of the slave woman hagar but the children of sarah and abraham that god saw and counted as righteous and they received the promise hallelujah and the word of god always compares our lives to be like theirs the word of god always encourages us to take a look at their lives to imitate christ as they imitated christ hallelujah and so i wanted to go back and let us look some more here you know and yesterday we talked about our motives having the right motives god saw sarah had the right motives before she received the promise and abraham they had the right motives god was who they were seeking to please more than themselves and so now i want us to look further into other character traits and powerful things that they did to please God hallelujah and so I want us to start I want us to go back to first Peter chapter 3 and I want us to take a look at Christ's life but in the end you're going to see right after Peter talked about Christ and his life and how we should live he compared Sarah to him he compared her life to him as an example for us to follow i thought that was so powerful he used sarah as a comparison of her being like christ and so i want us to look at it in first peter chapter 2 verse 21 he says for god called you to do good 
even if it means suffering just as Christ suffered for you. And he is your example and you must follow in his steps. He never sinned nor ever deceived anyone. He did not retaliate when he was insulted nor threaten revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God who always judges fairly. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. And by his wounds, you are healed. And once you were like sheep who wandered away, but now you have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your souls. Then he goes on in chapter three, verse one, in the same way, you wives must accept the authority of your husbands. Then, then even if some refuse to obey the good news, your godly lives will speak to them without any words. And they will be won over by observing your pure and reverent, and reverent lives. lives. Don't be concerned about the outward beauty of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry, or beautiful clothes. You should clothe yourselves instead with the beauty that comes from within. Stay with me, people of God. I'm going somewhere with this. The unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. Now listen, people of God, here it goes. This is how the holy women of old made themselves beautiful. They trusted God and accepted the authority of their husbands. For example, for instance, Sarah obeyed her husband, Abraham, and called him her master. And you are her daughters when you do what is right without fear of what your husbands might do. Then it goes on and says, in the same way you husbands must give honor to your wives and treat your wife with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's gifts of new life. Treat her as you should so your prayers will not be hindered. And so we can see here, all this compares back to Christ. It goes back to Christ. And Sarah, Peter used as an example of someone who had laid down their lives as Christ done for us. She didn't retaliate. She had a gentle and quiet spirit, which was precious in God's sight. She not only was beautiful on the outside, the beauty she had was on the inside, like Christ. Notice, people of God, how Peter used Sarah as an example, who is the mother, who became the mother of many nations, meaning who God wanted all around the world, all nations to be like. God was pleased with Sarah's beauty from within. Sarah had the spirit of the Lord in her. She had laid down her life for Abraham and we're going to look at that. Sarah is a type of Christ. Sarah is being compared to Christ's life and how he took up on our sins to save us. How he laid down his life for us. Who was away from him. Who was walking in rebellion. And so we could see Sarah was like that with Abraham. She surrendered and submitted to him. She saw him as her head. And she was willing to lay down her life for him. And she done this. You all remember the story. We talked about it on yesterday. When Abraham's life was in danger, when they went back to Egypt during the time of famine, when they was in, when they had to go to Egypt and look at what happened. I want us to look at it back in Genesis chapter 12. I want to start at verse 10. At that time, a severe famine struck the land of Canaan, forcing Abraham to go down to Egypt where he lived as a foreigner. And as he was approaching the border of Egypt, Abram said to his wife, Sarah, 
whose name at the time was not Sarah yet. Look, you are a very beautiful woman. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Let's kill him. Then we can have her. So please tell them you are my sister. Then they will spare my life and treat me well because of their interest in you. And so here we see that's what Sarah done. She laid down her life and her will to save Abraham's life. She was willing to surrender and do what is right for the sake of her husband's life. That's just like Christ. Sarah had a gentle and quiet spirit. She had the spirit of the Lord in her life. Sarah done what is good and pleasing in God's sight. And this is why she became the mother of many nations and kings. And not only was she the mother of many nations and kings, but she became the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Messiah. This is how she became the mother, hallelujah, of many nations. God was pleased with her. God saw that love. God saw her submission. God saw her obedience. My God, Sarah had a gentle spirit. And not was she only beautiful on the outside. Her husband was not just speaking about her beauty from the outside. Her husband was speaking about her beauty in every way. He knew that she would draw attention. He knew that his life would be spared because of her beauty. Once everyone knew that she was just his sister, they would praise him because the life she lived spoke volumes. And for to have such a beautiful sister like this, Abraham says, say you are my sister. They will love me and take care of me because of the beauty in you. And this is what happened with our Lord Jesus Christ. It was because of his beauty and righteousness that God spared our lives. When we got into trouble, God delivered us from our sins. When Adam and Eve sinned against God, sin came into the whole world. But it was through Christ's beauty, God spared our lives. And Egypt represents the world a place of bondage this is why the bible calls egypt in the word a place of bondage the house of bondage where the people of god was ruled under pharaoh's bondage and power that shows us he was like a type of the enemy a shadow of the enemy and so we can see that when abraham goes down him and sarah to Egypt, God was showing us how his people, when they were in Egypt, in the place of bondage, the place of the world, the place of sin and death, but there is one with them who will save them and deliver them, one who went with them in that same place to deliver them. And that's what happened with Sarah who was long with Abraham, she represented Christ, who was long with him, but she was willing to lay down her life and through her land down her life. This is what would save him. And so we could see the Lord using Abraham and Sarah as a type and a shadow, showing us Abraham being in the image of God's people who would go down to the place of bondage, who were in the world. But yet Sarah represents a Christ a type of Christ who will lay down her life to bring him out, to bring God's people out, just like Christ done for us. Hallelujah. And so we could see, hallelujah, how God is comparing Sarah to Christ through Peter, who revealed these precious things. And we are all called to be like her when we do what's right, the Bible says, we are her daughters and husbands as well, Peter even say. Talking about loving your wives, treating her right. 
he's still saying this is what Sarah even done as the Lord laying down our lives for one another. This is what pleases the Lord and it will bring salvation to our loved ones and our spouse through our obedience and righteousness. We are called as a priest, a nation of priests and a holy people. To lay down our lives as well. So when you stand in the gap for your loved ones. When you stand in the gap. For that wayward spouse. By laying down your life. People of God. Living a holy life that is pleasing unto the Lord. Walking in that beauty. That quiet gentle spirit. Called the Holy Spirit. The Lord will save that spouse of yours. Through your pure hands. And your godliness. This is what pleases the Lord. Hallelujah. And you know, the Bible tells us God blessed Sarah because of this. Because right after they had came out of Egypt, he tells Abraham this. Again, I want us to look at it in Genesis chapter 17. Hallelujah, verse 15. Then God said to Abraham, regarding Sarah, your wife, her name will no longer be Sarah. From now on, her name will be Sarah. And I will bless her and give you a son from her. Yes, I will bless her richly. And she will become the mother of many nations. Kings of nations will be among her descendants. And so remember that that word kings is capitalized. Talking about the king of kings, our Lord Jesus Christ. She will become the mother of him. And he will come through Isaac, the descendant, will come through Isaac. Talking about Christ, our Messiah. The Lord honors Sarah and say, she is the one that I'm pleased with. I want her to be the mother that the Lord Jesus Christ comes through. And it passed all the way down to Mary, my God. My God, I'm telling you, God is looking at our hearts. Man looks from the outside, but God sees the heart. Yes, if we look back even at Queen Vashti, whose place Esther took when she became queen. Vashti, yes, she was beautiful on the outside, but the inside was not. And she was removed. From the palace. But if you look at Queen Esther. She was beautiful from the inside. She knew how to please her king. And it was through her obedience. And her righteousness. She saved the whole nation of Israel. And had Haman hung. Because she knew how to touch. The heart of her king. It was through her righteousness. And her obedience. She was willing to lay down her life as well. For she has said, if I perish, then let me perish. But she was willing to face the king. Hallelujah. God had favored them. And so this is what happened with our Lord Jesus Christ. God's favor was upon his life. And God blessed us as a result of his holiness and righteousness. And so we see God changes Sarah's name from Sarah to Sarah, meaning you will become the mother of many nations and of kings. Of nations will be among her descendants, the Lord said. My God, and not only that, God blesses Isaac because of her. The word of God tells us this. If we look back in Genesis chapter 21, we could see what the Lord did in verse 1. The Lord kept his word and did for Sarah exactly what he had promised. She became pregnant and she gave birth to a son for Abraham in, her old, in his old age. This happened at just the time God had said it would. And Abraham named their son Isaac. But then I want to skip through. The Bible says down in 
verse 8. I want to look here. When Isaac grew up and was about to be winged, Abraham prepared a huge feast to celebrate the occasions. Now look at this, people of God. In verse 9, but Sarah saw Ishmael, the son of Abraham, and her Egyptian servant Hagar, making fun of her son Isaac. So she turned to Abraham and demanded, get rid of that slave woman and her son. He is not going to share the inheritance with my son Isaac. I won't have it. Now she was talking about that promise where Abraham and Sarah, son Isaac, would be who Christ would come through. Isaac was the seed that the Messiah would come from. But notice, God blessed their son Isaac, not Ishmael. Ishmael was blessed, but he wasn't blessed as Sarah's son. The son of the slave woman did not receive the promise, but the son of the free woman, the holy woman, received the blessing. And that's who we are, people of God, that are in Christ Jesus. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is liberty. Hallelujah. So all the promises are given to us that will believe. And that are Sarah's children and Abraham's. The Bible says in verse 11, this upset Abraham very much. Because Ishmael was his son. But God told Abraham, it says in verse 12, Do not be upset over the boy and your servant. Do whatever Sarah tells you. For Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. But I will also make a nation of the descendant of Hagar's son. Because he is your son too. Now, people of God, notice the blessings didn't compare. Abraham's son, Ishmael, yes, he was blessed. He, he was blessed. God multiplied him, had other nations to come from him. But those nations were the nations that stood against the nation of God's people. The nation of God's people. That nation that came from Ishmael became a thorn in the flesh of God's people. But the people of Israel. Isaac, they came from Isaac. They were blessed beyond measures because they came from Sarah and Abraham. God blessed their children and descendants because of their righteousness. And we are benefiting from that right now to this day, the Bible tells us in Romans, through their righteousness, through how they please God. But the children of the slave woman was not counted among them. You see, when we live our lives that are pleasing unto the Lord, the Lord will bless our generations. God will bless the works of our hands. God will prosper us in all that we do. God saw Sarah's motive that she was not big on the things of this world. Even when she was in the hands of two kings, twice she stood for what was right. And she only went there to lay down her life for Abraham. But her heart was not caught up in their riches and their things that I'm sure they had offered her. Sarah only was there to please God and to save Abraham, her husband. And God was pleased with her. And the Lord says, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for someone that will lay down their life for someone else to save them. Sarah kept her word and she said that she was Abraham's sister. She kept that promise because she knew it was going to save his life. And that is what pleased God. Sarah was tested in that area, just like we are being tested even now. God is looking at our lives. How are we pleasing? How are we pleasing him through the Holy Spirit's guiding and leading us this is what the lord jesus christ done for us and so peter used sarah as an example he saw that sarah's life was as christ and this is what god wants us to do and peter is saying god will bless us for doing it 
If we look back in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, he says, For God called you to do good, even if it means, even if it means suffering just as Christ suffered for you. And he is an example. And you must follow in his steps. But then when we skip down, we see he uses Sarah as that example, being as Christ, who laid down her life for Abraham. And God, we could see, Sean showed us how Abraham's life was spared. But when Pharaoh got word that Abraham was not Sarah's brother, he was her husband, God still spared him. God still came through and rescued them and got them out of there. God was testing Sarah. He saw what was in her life. He was looking to see what was in her. God saw what was in her. He was testing them along the way. Looking for what was in their heart. God was trying to see what was Sarah doing that moment. What would she do if she was given over to save? What would she do? Would she lay down her life? Sarah laid down her life. God was looking to see in that situation that Sarah got caught up in. What decisions will she make? Will she say no to her husband? Or will she be willing to lay down her life? And when God saw that, God blessed Sarah and she became the mother of many nations. And not only did she do it once, but she done it twice. God was searching Sarah's motives. Like I shared with you all, people of God, on yesterday. God tested her to see was she about was she concerned about the wealth and the riches of this world? And would she be willing to lay down her life for others? Will she be willing to love? Will she be willing to walk in righteousness? Will she be willing to obey my commands? My Lord, the Lord is saying to you, people of God, are you willing to lay down your life for your spouse the way Christ laid down his life for you? As Sarah, as Sarah, the Bible says, in the same way, be the daughters of Sarah, be the men and the women of God. Hallelujah. Walk in their ways. This is what will bring them out and back to the Lord. This is what first Peter is talking about. How the Lord, when he stood for us, it brought us back to God. It's not just about our marriages, people of God. Once your spouse come out of darkness and back into God's marvelous light, then your marriage will be restored as a result. And as a result of it, you will find that your husband can love you as Christ loved the church wives and wives can submit to their husbands and everything. This is how the marriages are restored. When one stands, hallelujah, up for what's right, the unsaved husband or wife is sanctified by their believing spouse, the one who are in Christ Jesus. And remember the word tells us in 1 John chapter 3, John the Apostle says, dear friends, in verse 21, if we don't feel guilty, we can come to God with bold confidence and we will receive from him whatever we ask because we obey him and do the things that please him. And this is his commandment, he says. We must believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, meaning follow him, follow Christ and love one another, he says just as he commanded us and those who obey god's commandments it says remain in fellowship with him and he with them and we know he live in us because the spirit he gave us lives in us and so he's saying the law will be with you if you obey him when you obey his commandments he will be with you he will bless you he will prosper you he'll give you whatever you ask He'll even save others. He'll save that loved one because of you. He'll give you whatever you ask. And this is why the Lord called Abraham a friend. The Bible says it in James because Abraham obeyed God and even Sarah. And the Lord Jesus Christ even tells us that all those who obey him 
or his friends and love him and love him and so we see how our obedience our obedience is better than sacrifice and so when sarah laid down her life her obedience was better than that sacrifice she didn't know if she would ever see her husband again but she was willing to lay down her life and pay the price and so that's what god is saying unto us people of god are you willing to lay down your life or are we going to go after other things or are we going to wait on his will to come to pass in our life and stand on the behalf of your husband your wife, man of God, woman of God, lay down your life. The word of God is telling us this, that this is what pleases the Lord when we walk uprightly before him so that others could come out. It is through our pure hands. We will be able to declare and decree a thing and it will be established and we will be able to stand against our enemies. The Lord God says, this is what will cause us to resist the enemy and he will flee through our obedience. And when we reverence God and submit to God, this is what James is talking about. Hallelujah. James tells us here so clearly in James chapter four, the Bible says in verse seven, submit yourselves therefore to God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. And then it says, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. But I want us to look at something here. The Bible tells us, back in verse 3, the word of God tells us about our motives. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. And so we see here how the Bible goes on in verse 4 and says, You adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? He says, I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. What do you think the scriptures mean? when they say that the spirit god has placed within us is filled with envy but he gives us even more grace to stand against such evil desires as the scriptures say god opposes the proud but favors the humble and so we can see that when we make other things when we make our lives about ourselves god opposes that when our motives are wrong, God opposes that. He calls us adulterers. God sees that we are making these things idols. We are making ourselves become an idol. And things, when our motives are off, instead of doing what is pleasing God. And so James is saying when we do this, it's time to repent. God will only raise up those that are humble those who have the right motives he'll give you what you ask and so god was checking their motives god was checking them in every way trying to see were there any idols there what what would they go after what would sarah go after what would abraham go after when i test them let me see what will they go after god even checked to see was isaac an idol to Abraham by testing him to lay him on the altar and Abraham was willing to obey God God checked Sarah's motives to see was she someone that would go after the the riches the riches of Egypt would she go after the riches of kings and also what is her life about would she be willing to lay down her life you know yes she was given over to kings but that's not where her heart was it wasn't about what they had sarah was laying down her life to save her husband sarah was obeying god it was about god's will and when we make our life become about God's will, 
God will hear and answer us when we are obedient and are willing to walk in love and pray and seek God's righteousness. Look for the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us so that we can walk in ways that are pleasing unto the Lord. Hallelujah. As the scriptures say, people of God, a man leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two are one. This is a great mystery, but it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. Hallelujah. That promise is coming to pass. God will give you what you ask. God is willing to bring that spouse out. In fact, it is already done. God is just looking for our obedience unto him and trust in him. Trust in him and seek to do what is right. The Bible tells us this in Matthew chapter 6. Again in verse 33, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously. And he will give you everything you need. He will bless your life, people of God. He'll bless us in all that we do. Let that be your main goal and focus. Having the character of Christ. Having the character of Christ in us. And not the things of this world. Not ourselves. But willing to lay down our lives unto the death. Hallelujah. And love not our lives unto the death. Praise the Lord. This is how we overcome the devil. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. They overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimonies. The Bible says, and they love not their lives unto the death. They were willing to lay down their lives. And this is what we saw in Sarah. And God blessed her. Hallelujah. So get ready, people of God, for what's coming your way. Your obedience and reverence unto the Lord. Hallelujah is what he's looking for. The promises has already been given. They are yes and amen to those that are in Christ Jesus. Meaning those that obey Christ Jesus. Those that love him. Those that walk up rightly before him. Those that have faith in God. For without faith, it is impossible to please him. Hallelujah. And let us keep a heart of repentance. It's not that we are not going to make mistakes. God knows we are going to make mistakes. But it's the heart he looks at. He's looking for those that are willing and obedient. Those that want help to do what's right. God looks at that. And he'll come along and help us. When we make mistakes, ask God to forgive us. Dust ourselves off. Hallelujah. And remain humble under the mighty hand of God. And he'll give us power over the enemy. To resist the devil and make him flee. Hallelujah. And now I'm going to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, we just receive the blessings. We thank you for them, Lord. Thank you for what's coming our way, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. That our spouse are coming out. Lord, thank you that you are turning hearts back to you you're saving their lives you're blessing our marriages they are going to be greater than they ever was oh god oh god we thank you for restoration and healing thank you for blessing our homes our families lord god thank you jesus for your goodness and your mercy that shall follow us all the days of our lives lord thank you that you are rebuking the devourer lord god you're setting the captives free you're changing hearts and minds. Thank you for the deliverance, oh God, that you're bringing forth in Jesus' name through the blood. Lord, we give you the praise, oh God. Continue to bless marriages, Lord, and bring them out. Continue, Lord God, letting your will be done and causing marriages to illustrate Christ and the church united into one where a husband loves his wife as himself. And the wives submit to her husband and love him and support him in everything as the church does unto Christ. Lord God, we love you. We thank you. We honor you and worship you. And also, Lord God, bless the works. Bless the workings of your people's hands and bless their seed, Lord God, many that have soul. Lord, I give you the praise. Lord, whatever they are believing and asking you for, may you multiply. Lord, I stand in agreement with them. In Jesus' name, thank you for multiplying, multiplying it back 100-fold in return. And Father, I just thank you for your peace and your grace, your love and your kindness. 
that you are shedding abroad in our hearts. Lord, thank you that you're causing us to walk up rightly before you through your word that is sanctifying us and cleansing us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Jesus, for the character traits and the fruits of the spirit that are being developed each and every day in our lives, in our lives, oh God. Thank you for the blessings of the Lord that make you rich and you add no sorrow to it. In Jesus' holy name, oh, we bless you and all the people of God says, amen, amen and amen, hallelujah. Get ready, people of God, that breakthrough is on the way. Remember that God loves you and I love you too. And until next time, bye-bye.